Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at the 10 hardest Super Mario levels. While Mario typically adheres to players of all ages and skill levels, Nintendo has shown that even the plucky plumber can test your mettle from time to time. Which Mario level do you believe is the most challenging? Let us know down in the comments. Before we begin, we publish new videos all week long, so be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. World 8 Fortress Super Mario Bros. 3 Super Mario Bros. 3 is already a challenging game with its enemy placement, demanding platforming, and airships that turn the game into a bullet hell. World 8's Fortress, on the other hand, is the biggest pain of the bunch. As if the tight spaces and conveyor belts weren't a hassle already, this fortress also employs a series of fake doors that will send you back to the start of the level. Considering the stress and frustration it inflicts, you'd think this level would have a more challenging boss at the end, rather than boom boom. World 8-7, New Super Mario Brothers. New Super Mario Bros. isn't exactly tough in terms of gameplay mechanics or even enemy placement. Granted, those are factors as to why World 8-7 is a challenge on its own. What else would you expect from a level that really hounds you with every variant of Hammer Bros in the game? Yes, you're dealing with all of them. The regular Hammer Bros, the Boomerang Bros, the Fire Bros, and even the Chunky Sumo Bros, whatever they're called. But what adds to the difficulty is the Nintendo DS itself specifically its D-pad and how Mario controls in general. It can make it cumbersome to precisely jump on the Hammer Bros, sometimes leading you to taking a hit. It can sometimes feel like you're being punished just for being cautious with Mario's movement. TikTok Clock, Super Mario 64. Originally, we were going to put Rainbow Ride on here due to how segmented that world is and how easy it is to fall off. Then we remembered TikTok Clock, the world that changes its behavior depending on where the hands fall when you enter. This simple feature will determine entirely how easy or hard your mission will become, especially when certain missions will require the clock to function with all moving parts. A guide will certainly help in completing every star here as smoothly and quickly as possible. Just beware of the heave ho wandering around midway up the level. Champions Road, Super Mario 3D World. Super Mario 3D World is overall an easy game, a breezy jog for those looking for a simple platformer that focuses more on fun than making the player sweat. It's not personally my favorite, but I do understand why a lot of people enjoy it. But for those who really want to test their skills, there is one course to cap off your long, long journey. Champion's Road forces you to constantly be on the move with disappearing platforms, beat blocks, swinging spike pendulums, and even a section that restricts you to swimming controls as you avoid spiked walls. And you better have a grasp on the constant motion inflicted by boost pads, or else the final stretch is going to be a major slog for you. Long Journey's End, Super Mario Odyssey. Speaking of final stretches, Super Mario Odyssey holds a massive challenge for those looking to experience everything the game has to offer. Upon collecting 500 power moons, you'll unlock the darker side of the moon, which houses the notorious Long Journey's End. 
From moon snakes and lava to cannons and burbos, your knowledge and understanding of every capture and every little maneuver will be put to the test here. You have no checkpoints to fall back on here either, and dying will send you all the way back to the very beginning of the level. Only the strong survive here. Luigi's Purple Coins Super Mario Galaxy When playing Super Mario Galaxy for the first time, many had to adjust to the different camera angles and occasionally having to play while Mario is upside down. Tricky, yes, but that's not even the hardest part of Galaxy. Luigi's Purple Coins has had even the most hardcore Mario players banging their heads against a wall. Our walkable Luigi is coated with green checkered platforms, which, as every Galaxy player knows, disappear as soon as you step on them. And due to Luigi's awkward design, he creates this weird layout that makes it insanely hard to calculate your path and adapt accordingly. It's especially grueling if you miss a coin mid-jump. You may as well just throw Mario off the edge and redo the whole thing at that point. Pachinko, Super Mario Sunshine. The most frustrating aspect of Super Mario Sunshine is its lack of polish, at least the clean polish that most Nintendo games usually sport. This lack of polish is exactly why the Pachinko level is the most painful, the most obnoxious, the most aggravating part of Super Mario Sunshine. The finicky physics and restrictive controls can lead to some ridiculously unfair deaths and rack up the number of lives lost just from this simple mini-game. Some YouTubers claim there is an easy method to cheesing this level, but let's be honest, we all know there is no real control here. <laughs> Impossible Pack. New Super Mario Bros. 2. Danger! This pack is for pro players only. Difficulty? 5 Bowsers out of 5. That is what the screen tells you prior to starting the impossible pack, and it is not a message to be taken lightly. Lasting three levels, the impossible pack puts you in a harrowing crunch for time, only giving you a little under two minutes to finish the course. Death awaits you around every corner in the form of pitfalls, porky puffers, fire bars, grinders, and poisoned water. Speed, efficiency, and caution are all required here, so don't dilly-dally too long and be mindful of your position. World C3, Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. Just when you thought the Lost Levels couldn't get any more infuriating to tolerate with its convoluted level design, World C3 steps in and puts you through the ringer here. The entire level focuses on utilizing Super Springs to launch Mario so high into the air that you'll have to guess where exactly he is off screen and hope you can land him at the next Super Spring safely. To make matters worse, a blustery wind will affect your trajectory throughout the whole thing, making deaths feel super cheap at times. Grand Master Galaxy, the perfect run. Super Mario Galaxy 2. Show of hands, who beat Grand Master Galaxy? Cool, cool. But who beat Grand Master Galaxy's perfect run? 
For those unaware, this is one of the toughest challenges of any Mario game, as you will have to traverse this final challenge without getting hit a single time. And Grandmaster Galaxy does not hold back its punches. Disappearing platforms, hordes of enemies attacking at once, narrow pathways that can send you into a galactic abyss, projectiles coming from every which way, and it all creates a new kind of hell that's only present in the Mushroom Kingdom. Well, outer space of the Mushroom Kingdom, but you get what I'm saying. However, it is also brilliant in its design, so much so that a whole speedrunning community was born from it, and the methods they've found to beat this level, they're unbelievable, man. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.